everyone and welcome to video 3.4, a brief overview of online learning in government as part of the AEDT course 2160 Online Learning Theories and Models. So just two analysis questions to ponder uh, prior to going into some of this content. Something around the areas of research of government online learning that you're familiar with and which ones do you feel need more investigation? And then the second one is, how does government online learning contribute what's considered to be effective adult education? So why online learning in government? And I've taken the first quote right from the Canadian School of Public Service and put the link there to their site so you can explore it further. The basic premise is to learn, network, and succeed in the public service. Uh, fiscal responsibility, especially as we saw in the corporate um, training video, especially w as part of the economic downturn, uh, government budgets are tighter than ever, and so being able to offer training to more people uh, without flying them across the country, without flying trainers across the country, pulling rooms together, booking hotels, having conference facilities, um, there certainly is a, a, a cost savings to doing the learning virtually. Another similarity with corporate is the regulatory mandatory training requirements. So some roles in government have mandatory requirements and this is a nice way to meet those. Looking at the fourth bullet point, this is pulled from the federal government in the U.S. and their focus there as well, one of their key focus around the learning plan for government public service employees is to create an IT literate workforce. Meeting the needs of the new generation workforce, as in corporate training, is also cited as one of the reasons. Um, of course, access and flexibility. Um, that is a difficult one at times in government, depending upon the role that the unions play. Um, but much work has been done to date on incorporating online learning within the tasks of the day in a government position, uh, and what that would mean with respect to different collective agreements. And then the last bullet point is this notion of practicing what you preach. So there is an increasing move to e-government, as you'll see in some of the later clips that I've chosen here. Uh, and so being able to do e-government requires you to be able to know your technology, obviously, and your software and your process. And so what better way to do that than to learn it in the setting in which your end user, the citizen, will be experiencing the service you're providing. So what are some ways that it's being done in government? The tricky part about um, governments doing online learning is, of course, it's all password protected. And so there's not a lot to show when you go searching for what does it look like. There's a lot of uh, providers that uh, talk about what they do for government, but in many cases, they're not able to actually show what they have done. Um, Articulate Presenter is a software tool that many governments use as a way to quickly basically take a PowerPoint and make it much more interactive, build in some educational uh, structures, potentially, uh, into it so that it's more of an engaging learning environment, but still very much self-paced um, setup. Simulations are another way that depending on the size of the budget can be done. There's some beautiful simulations out there around uh, regulatory training for government workers in Ontario and uh, Alberta, British Columbia that around water management and water treatment facilities. The third bullet is personal learning communities. Um, many of these, and I'll show you an example shortly, uh, also connect to a personalized learning environment for the government employee. Uh, others are separate secure personal learning communities where they're attempting to get some informal learning happening, that, that idea of knowledge sharing and information sharing. Of course, there's traditional online learning methods in quotes, um, so a learning management system with synchronous and synchron asynchronous uh, experiences. Standalone website content, which is much more of a, almost a job aid. Uh, video or audio casts, and then virtual conferences. These are by no means the only ways it's being done. They're just some of the ones that are more prevalent and common in the field. So here's an example that I have agreement to share with you. This is from a First, well, First Nations governments across Canada. This is actually their resource center. And so this supports the work of First Nations who are under uh, legislation called the Framework Agreement to manage their own land. 
and there's quite a bit involved in managing land and so one of the government officials at the First Nation level for each First Nation government in Canada um, is tasked, or several, but usually one, with being the lands manager and having to negotiate this process um, and help their First Nation as they move to being able to self-govern their lands. And so here are three screen captures of the Virtual Resource Center, which is their top left. This is their um, personalized learning environment, very similar to an iGoogle type, type of page where you can select key elements, move them around, um, show what you would like to have seen or not. The second, the middle slide there where it says meeting place, is their online community. So this is where they have educational programming that's relevant to the lands manager and lands committee and staff. Um, it is moderated in keeping with best practices of online learning communities and it does have programming that is uh, changing monthly and uses guest speakers and a variety of different uh, avenues to reach and support the government official who is in charge of the lands management. The final screenshot, the one to the front of the screen, is their actual courseware and it's built in a Moodle platform learning management system. So you can access all of this from their front page, the Virtual Resource Center, and it is an opportunity to interconnect the different pieces that they're working on. In looking for some uh, resources for you as part of this, two of these, two two jumped out at me um, because they, they speak to sort of some of the broader issues around government in online learning. So the second bullet there, e-government and applications, is uh, it's a corporate produced but it's from Europe and I'd like you to take a look at it, it's short. Um, just from the eye of, okay, if this is where the technology is leading us, then what kind of learning opportunities will the public servant be required to take um, in order to be able to keep pace with the services they're offering their citizens. The first bullet uh, is the Kenya e-government documentary. A little longer, I think it runs about 18 minutes. Um, but what I really enjoyed about this one, um, because it's coming out of the Kenyan government, uh, the directorate for e-government, it focuses on e-government and what it's providing to the citizens of Kenya. But in viewing it, it's very easy to see many of the themes that would have to come through in any kind of online training to support both the citizens, and, uh, users of the systems, and the government officials themselves. So I've left those two with you to watch and moving to the synthesis questions, I'd like you to ponder how governments can use online learning to further the business of government and whether this is necessary, why or why not. And the last one is, does online learning in government create a further digital divide between countries or does it work to reduce it? So I'll leave those with you and uh, I've left you some time in here to go and explore the videos and I look forward to our discussion in the tutorial. Thank you.